So um, I'm actually part of a rap and spoken word ministry. Um, the name is 316, like three, the eight. I was going to say the letter three, I mean the number three, <laughs> and then one, like spelled O-N-E, and then six. So we actually released a, like an album at the beginning of the year, it's called the New Life Album. So you can actually check it out on our website, 316.org, yeah, and download it. So. I'm actually going to do pieces, um, two pieces. The first one, it's on the album. So. Here we go. See, I'm no ordinary person. Anytime I look into the mirror, I see the reflection of Christ. And yes, I'm made in this image. I'm deeply rooted in Christ. So I'll be bearing the fruits. I'll be bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And I ain't speaking of mangoes or oranges you eat, see. Go check out Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. So, yes, I was once a sinner. But then the blood of Christ undressed that sin nature. So now I put on the full armor of God. Breastplate of righteousness. Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Helmet of salvation. And if you've ever read Romans 8, verse 1, you see I'm no longer under condemnation. I did not become a better person to get saved. I got saved to become a better person. See, so now I have Christ in me. I ain't ordinary. He died for me and, and buried my sins in the cemetery. See, out of the dust I was made by grace, I got saved. So I stand and I boast in Jesus' name. See, I'm now a part of God's empire. I'm now a part of God's empire. No Lucius, but yo, I'm courageous like a lion. See, I'm fully filled with the Holy Spirit. My whole being is heavenly. I'm a city set upon a hill. And I ain't speaking of Beverly. See, <laughs> I've got the life of God in me. I'm full of greatness, and I hope you can all see that I'm his righteousness. I'm as bold as a lion. I'm a king and a priest, and anytime I speak, it's with power and authority. Because I come in the name of Jesus, one whose name has all power and authority. Yo, I'm not moved by situations. Those are only temporary. I'm only moved by the word of God and what it says about me. I'm God's masterpiece. I approach him with confidence. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I'm God's special possession, yeah? And see, I've been bought with a price. I'm not a slave to sin. And yo, I've been made right. I'm one spirit with him. He has lavishly lavished his love on me. So I set my mind on things above and not at any things. Because I'm a saint. I'm sanctified. I'm saved. And I magnify his name. Because I am born again. Fools. I was brutally beaten by cruel men. Not only for your salvation, but I wanted a relationship with you which requires your dedication. I was, I was slain before the foundations of the world. I paid a great price. I didn't just make the ultimate sacrifice. I... I was the ultimate sacrifice and some of you still do not understand what this great price brought and no, it didn't only bring you your salvation, but something worth much more. For not only is it the Father's will that you all be saved, but also come to the knowledge of the truth. You see, the nails were driven through my feet and hands. So that when you place your faith in my blood, your problems become my, your battles become my battles because then there was this great covenant and no words can express the victory the wealth, the blessings that came when my precious blood was shed on the cross that day. You see, my blood, my blood cleansed you within. So you could win and begin fellowship with the Father and go further away from sin. But I, but I keep on bleeding when you still do things not pleasing, believe me. And although it wasn't a football game, although it wasn't a football game, I died on the cross as your substitute and I took your place. You see, my only goal, my only goal is so you grow in the Father's grace, but... Some of you have played foul. You have been red carded. You have failed to realize the essence of my father's grace. So rich in his mercy and love. And I've been left on the streets of sin begging. You see some of you have played foul. You have been red carded. Some of you have played foul. You have been left like chickens begging on the streets of sin. You see. I was the son of a carpenter. And 
Yeah, yeah, I guess I learned a thing or two to chase it away your worldly desires. Be the ruler of your life. Straighten your path so my spirit hammers my word into your crooked heart. You see, my walk on this earth was to teach you to love in truth and in deeds and not theories and speeches. My love for you, it breaks you literally and casts every part of you to make you my masterpiece. I'm the expression of God's unconditional love for humanity. Because while you were yet still sinners, I, I died for you. And I do not have any reason for loving you. I, I guess I just do. But until I'm the obsession of your stagnant heart, you will look to mere men for your needs. And you will see that you always be displeased. For after you have been saved, I expect you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. No room for darling, Charlie, because my grace is sufficient for you. And my love is never ending. So, so church, I'm never walking you down the aisle to bring you suffering. You see, I'm never walking you down the aisle to bring you suffering. The only ring I put on your finger was so you could offer yourself to me as a living sacrifice, the perfect offering. See, when I died on the cross, I took away the pain and shame. When I died on the cross, I gave you a brand new name. When I died on the cross, it was so you could walk in divine health. See, if only you'd be conscious of the fact that you are the righteousness of God in me, your walk with me will never be the same. And all these things that your money can't buy, I freely give to you. And yo, I already paid the price. My death on Calvary's cross is proof. I willingly, lovingly, sacrificially chose you as my bride. But until official ceremony takes place, the eternal union on our wedding day, you are to remain faithful and give yourselves holy. For it will be a big blow to find my bride's garments still stained with sin and just like the parable of the ten virgins i hope you learn a lesson please be prepared as we are waiting in anticipation for the very day our glorious you walk down that aisle and you become the new jerusalem the holy city this is a message from your bridegroom christ